Crow Country is the big surprise of 2024. I learned of this game the day of its release and it's already a contender for my game of the year. It is an incredible little experience and this humble indie title is restoring my faith in gaming. For a long period of time, I was in a pessimistic spiral because of the state of AAA gaming, which I believe to be almost entirely creatively bankrupt. But the past few years has convinced me that it doesn't matter. I'll never have to play a AAA title again with the amount of fantastic games coming from talented indie devs. I really just have nothing but praise for this game, but I want to talk about it briefly anyway, because Crow Country deserves it. This is a game that understands that details matter. Every little bit of this game is crafted with care and precision. So let's take a look. Talking about Crow Country in broad strokes, obviously it's a survival horror game taking healthy amounts of inspiration from classics in the genre like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, but with modern sensibilities. You play as Agent Mara Forrest, and you're looking for the owner of an abandoned amusement park inside that very same titular abandoned amusement park, Crow Country. You have to navigate the pitfalls of the dangerous park filled with bizarre puzzles and murderous creatures. Aesthetically, it draws most from early PS1 titles with an incredible visual style. If you've ever looked at the pre-rendered environments of Final Fantasy VII and wanted to be in them, fully immersed in that world, well, fantastic news because we're in that era. The environment has that baked look to it, that in the early days of gaming meant it was completely static and couldn't really be interacted with. But in the modern era, we can easily have that same look but with a completely dynamic experience. So in Crow Country, we get beautifully detailed environments that we get to be completely immersed in and interact with. Even something as simple as being able to fully rotate the camera brings me joy. As someone who loves going back and playing old games from the PS1 and N64 generation, I really feel like this is the spiritual successor to that experience, bringing the best elements of the past together with the modern quality of life that the present offers. The world we explore also unashamedly floats in a black void, again harkening back to older days of gaming. I feel like a game less confident in its presentation than Crow Country might have tried a different approach, but I love the modular segmented feeling this gives the game. You move from one room to another and are met with a bite-sized chunk of the game floating in empty space, each area but a smaller piece of the larger puzzle for you to put together and enjoy. Layered on top of the delicious environments, the characters are simple polygonal models, more interested in capturing the essence of characters rather than photorealism. Again, this reminds me of Final Fantasy VII with the blocky wide-shouldered cloud. However, when it comes to the enemies of this game, it takes a rather different approach. They're gruesomely detailed with disgusting, human but mutated aesthetics. The contrast between the innocent blocky polygonal humans and the organic monstrosities creates effective body horror tension. Fear sets in as you realize the creatures on the screen were likely once human. In terms of gameplay, I would describe Crow Country as refreshingly simple. You have a gun. You have a mission to find someone. Everything else will happen very organically as part of the gameplay. The controls of this game are again a best of both worlds scenario, offering you classic or modern in reference to how aiming and firing your weapons works and both modern and tank controls ready to go. When you take aim, you must stand completely still, something I don't mind at all, but I suppose it's one element of the game that does feel more old-fashioned. But if you're someone who despises combat and you're only around for the vibes of the game, which we'll talk about later, Pro Country offers an entire mode just for you, a mode with no enemies to impede you. You're free to play the entire experience just solving the puzzles, finding bits of lore, and enjoying the impeccable atmosphere of the game. I think it's neat to offer both experiences, survival horror or pure mystery mode, for whatever type of player might pick the game up. However, my literal only criticism of this game is that it's way too easy, so it wasn't the most necessary inclusion. But if you hate combat but love the feel of horror games, Crow Country has you in mind. Speaking of the difficulty, sadly this game doesn't offer much in that department. Most enemies are quite simple to evade, and there's not tremendous pressure to fight any of them. You can basically play the entire game and only fight a few enemies quite reasonably. Since people often look to games like these for a heavily replayable experience with increased challenges and higher difficulty mode, this game lacks that facet of the survival horror experience. However, I anticipate difficulty modes could be added pretty easily, so someday this might be fixed, and it doesn't ruin the Crow Country experience at all. The game is still superb as is. Okay, so with the main elements out of the way, let's talk about the details. Like I said, Crow Country is a game that understands details matter. Let's start at the very beginning. You play as Mara. The game opens with a very simple sequence of her driving to her destination, Crow Country. When we arrive, we enter a very interactable world and one that is rich in detail. Crow Country is abandoned and the game really nails the look. You can tell that the place was once vibrant and fun, but is now grungy and in disrepair. It also looks like all the workers simply left one day never to return. The park is dirty and full of junk and the aesthetics of the game are borderline cluttered. There's so many objects just lying around. This takes a bit of getting used to, but I love the detail it adds. It makes everything feel more real and lived in. The art style maybe could have felt a bit sterile with the simple geometry of everything, but the mess that the park is in really sells it as a location. To my delight, the environment is not just for show. You can interact with an insane amount of stuff. 
One of my favorite things in survival horror games is just reading the character's inner monologue when they inspect things in their environment, and this game offers that in heaps. Mara can interact with an insane amount of stuff, and this game is packed with content. There are tons of game tips, staff memos, work logs, journal entries, and hints to interact with. All of this stuff contributes to the game, either being directly helpful or revealing lore. In fact, much of the story is pretty much up to you to discover as the player. If you're careful and attentive, you'll be able to put the details together and solve the mystery of the park. Beyond this though, your attention to detail will pay off when you pick up a hint for a puzzle that's in the end section of the game. This is another neat thing that the game does. The hints that you find, in the form of staff memos left behind or whatever, aren't necessarily in order, and you might have to remember something way later in the game. However, the game knows that it might overload the player with this insane amount of info, and at every save room there's a binder with all the gameplay hints you found neatly collected in one place. Early on in my playthrough I saw a glass bottle with an item I wanted inside. I tried to interact with it to no avail. I'd been trained by PS1 games with low interactivity to give up there, assuming I didn't have whatever I needed to interact with it, and the pre-rendered stylized look convincing my brain that this bottle was part of the environment, only to be observed from a distance. However, of course, in Crow Country you can just shoot the glass, exchanging your limited ammo for whatever prize might be inside. Little things like this are just a fun example of how we can bring the aesthetics of older games into the future but still improve upon them. And it's not just glass jars. The environment is highly detailed and full of interactions. You'll be rewarded for your keen eye as well, with more story details or hints for the many puzzles of the game. There are also many optional secrets and upgrades that await the player. And of course, all these puzzles have the insane logic that a survival horror video game set in theme park might have. Survival horror games are already relatively notorious for having downright silly elements in their games, like absurd sequences to open a normal door, and Crow Country does not disappoint, but rather embraces this. To get a bike chain and a remote-controlled swan, you'll first have to find an enormous ruby in a painting, and to find that ruby you'll have to find a machine crank, and to get that machine crank, etc, etc. There's also a handful of optional weapons to find, and actually, if I'm not mistaken, all weapons besides your main pistol are optional, so the game incentivizes exploration and attention to detail. There's also multiple ways to complete some puzzles, and in my three playthroughs I've done right now, the sequence has been in a different order with slightly different solutions each time. Surprisingly for me, as I am typically ambivalent towards stories and games, I actually found myself engrossed in the mysteries of Crow Country. Who is Mara? What is her motivation? Why are all these other characters hanging around an abandoned park? Just what are these creatures? Why is there an excavation site in the middle of this? What exactly is in the vents? Believe it or not, all these questions are answered in a way that will both satisfy you and produce a hundred more questions. And all of this is wrapped up in some of the best music and sound design I've heard in a horror game in a long time. The music perfectly sets the tone of the game, capturing the absurdity of a theme park with the terror of facing mutated humans. Layered into this are some tasty sounds that I've never heard anything like, but immediately clue you in that something is out there, and it's dangerous. Listen to the sound this frightening enemy produces. So, in conclusion, when a game nails every individual element from gameplay and puzzles to aesthetics and atmosphere, I really think it does culminate into something that's even greater than the sum of its parts. I wish I could say more, but I think this game deserves to be explored and experienced for yourself, so I'll leave it at that. I highly, highly recommend this game, and it makes me excited for the future of gaming if this is the kind of stuff we can expect from indie games. Alright, dude, profit out. See you in the next video.